As an actress and a singer, she went beyond the parameters of the silver screen to the hearts of film fans everywhere. Larger than life and three times as sexy, this exotic yet sophisticated beauty left behind a legacy of classic cinema moments. But I am good woman. I just want to kiss you a little. I'm your kind of guy, see? And you're my kind of gal. She remains one of the most recognized faces in the history of the movies. She is the one and only Marlena Dietrich. She was born Maria Magdalene Dietrich on December 27, 1901 in Berlin, Germany. As a child, she made music her passion by singing and studying the violin. When she was old enough, she performed in a chorus line with a local cabaret. She began appearing in German films in 1923 after studying acting under Max Reinhardt. Her big break came when she was discovered by director Joseph von Sternberg. He cast her in the female lead as a dance hall girl in the classic German film, The Blue Angel. In this famous drama, Emil Jannings plays a conservative professor worried about the influence a local cabaret singer is having over his charges. He goes to the club and tries to catch his students in the act. Only to find himself falling for this bewitching beauty. to take off your hat. I must ask you to stop untaining the balls of my clock. Sure, I have nothing else to do. After all, Professor, you can't blame the poor boys, can you? Eventually marrying Marlena, the professor not only loses his job, but literally finds himself reduced to nothing more than a clown. A searing portrayal of a respectable man's decline, the film was a success and made a star out of Dietrich. It also displayed her vocal talents as she crooned what would become one of her most famous numbers, Falling in Love Again. The Blue Angel would be the only film von Sternberg would make in Germany. Von Sternberg would move to America, taking his new discovery with him. In Hollywood, Dietrich and von Sternberg collaborated on a total of six films. The director enjoyed making the most of Dietrich's inherent style and sexuality. In one film, he even had the actress dress like a man in full suit and trousers. In the 1932 hit, Shanghai Express, she played Shanghai Lily, one of the passengers on a train taken over by Chinese rebels. Do you expect to stay in Shanghai for a while? I don't know. Then we ought to see each other a lot. Perhaps. Why is he tied up? I'm going to present him with a small token of my esteem. You don't dare harm him. You promised to return him. I didn't say in what condition. This way, please. Somebody. Yeah. 
Captain Harvey, if I were you, I'd mind my own business. That's exactly what I intend to do. In the latter half of the 1930s, Dietrich appeared in a handful of unmemorable films. One of these was Desire, which reteamed her with Gary Cooper. Afraid. Of what? Of you. But I didn't do anything. But you intended to. I did not. <laughs> you had it in your eye. <laughs> I did not show it. Will you kindly let me handle this alone? Now, I'm telling you... Don't be so... Whose right. niece is she? Your niece or my niece? Whose car was it? Your car or my car? Now, let me tell you, my niece is more important to me than your car. My car is more important to me than your niece. Well, I don't know. My uncle sent me to persuade you to leave. Can you be persuaded? No. Thank you, darling. Why did you let me go through all this torture? Why didn't you tell me? I wasn't sure if I liked you enough. The two had previously worked together in the 1930 hit, Morocco. But even this match was not enough to reverse Dietrich's declining box office popularity. In 1939, she made a strong comeback in the comic western, Destry Rides Again. Her co-star was the one and only Jimmy Stewart. In this home movie footage taken during filming, both actors can be seen in one of the film's major moments. With Destry, a big success, Dietrich immediately followed it up with Seven Sinners. Again cast as a torch singer, Marlena was as sexy as ever. The film would be the actress's first of three appearances opposite John Wayne. Broderick Crawford also appeared as a tough sailor. He had a great career and you stopped him right in his tracks. Stop it! What are you trying to make out of him? Something like me? You fool! You don't know what you're talking about! Of inciting and exciting a riot, of being a public nuisance. I make rough seas. I set the jungle on fire. I'm a bad influence. You don't want to make a scene here, do you? No, I don't want to make a scene. Not for anything in the world. Good night. <laughs> Not yet. Oh, I must. Because at this time of the night, I have no sense. No sense this time of night. Back on top, Marlena received a lucrative offer from Adolf Hitler to return to Germany and make films under the Nazi regime. Dietrich refused and instead began making numerous USO tour appearances, raising the morale of American troops. Soon, her contributions to the war effort overshadowed the films she was appearing in. In 1942's The Spoilers was the second adaptation of Rex Beach's novel about Alaskan gold miners. It was also the second teaming of Marlena Dietrich and John Wayne, though this time Randolph Scott was thrown into the mix. Wide open and wild, ruled by searing lead and silken legs. Against this lusty, brawling background, Rex Beach's memorable story produced by Frank Lloyd comes to vivid, exciting life with this outstanding cast. Marlena Dietrich. Randolph Scott, John Wayne. From now on, things are going to be run my way, and you can start adjusting yourself to that idea. And that's my way. Like it? Listen, you can leave those sourdoughs around like children while you shake them down for their folks, but I happen to be a man that gets what he wants. From now on, it's you and me. Pittsburgh took the same three actors 
but made the men coal miners in the Pennsylvania town. Once again, this trio of talent proved to be a smash at the box office. I'm your kind of guy, see? And you're my kind of gal. We were cut from the same chunk. Yeah. Some dirt and smoke. Maybe that's what you want. I've got other plans. But why do you insist on keeping me? Is it because in me you have some alleged social standing? Or is it because you and that hunky are after Stop me? it. Marriage with that crowd is a business like everything else. Oh, come on, hunky. You got the wrong slant. You gotta see this thing the right way. Anything left when I finish, you can have him. Baby, this is one time you're gonna do your own fighting. Trying to be a hero, huh? In 1944, Dietrich found herself in ancient Baghdad when she starred in Oriental Dream, also known as Kismet. As the character Jamila, Marlena turns on the sex appeal as she romances co-star Ronald Coleman. In my palace there is a corner I call the Garden of the Stars. I like that. There I sat night after night with my astrologers. Yes, they're a stupid lot. They don't know anything about women. But you do, my prince. There uh, never was another woman in the world I couldn't forget but you. Edward Arnold lent his support to the Coleman-Dietrich pairing as the city's grand vizier. Oh, princes bathe in, unbathed in my time, and very fast, but never with a speed like this. <laughs> and what has his highness of Hesiod to say? One of the magicians. Can he juggle his way out of this? And juggle he did. Even Baghdad, city of magic and adventure, had never seen anything like it. He shook the old town till its bones rattled. And this is where the story really begins. They lived happily ever after. Well, not always happily, perhaps, but they lived. In 1947, Marlena was cast as a gypsy in the critically panned Golden Earrings. This time, Ray Milland was the actress's romantic lead, but the two did not get along off screen. A woman whose golden earrings were symbols of temptation. An untamed gypsy charmer who kisses for keeps. You are young, and you are strong, and you are my beautiful man. Please, your hands. Couldn't you arrange to sit on them or something? <laughs> now get this clear once and for all. You simply must learn to behave like a good woman. But I am good woman. I just want to kiss you a little. A man from the civilized, conventional world on a secret mission that plunges him into the primitive, passionate life of a gypsy caravan. Milan felt the 45-year-old actress was too old for the role she was playing in the film. But Dietrich proved she still had what it took when she appeared in Alfred Hitchcock's thriller, Stage Fright. This sounds to me remarkably like blackmail. I think I'd better call the police. Yes, do call the police, Miss Inwood. We'll talk to them together. Who are you? Though meant as a vehicle for the up-and-coming Jane Wyman, it was Dietrich who stole the show as a famous London stage singer. Marlena's film appearances were few throughout the 50s and often amounted to nothing more than cameos, such as in the all-star extravaganza Around the World in 80 Days, or in Orson Welles' noir masterpiece, Touch of Evil. Where is my wife? My wife! But in 1957, she had one of the best roles of her career as the wife of an accused murderer in Witness for the Prosecution. Tyrone Power, Charles Lawton, in the most scintillating role of his brilliant career. 
Marlena Dietrich, the woman of mystery, a fascinating question mark. Mrs. Vell, do you love your husband? Leonard thinks I do. Well, do you? Am I already under oath? We are dealing with a capital crime. The prosecution will try to hang your husband. Directed by Billy Wilder, the film was an inspired adaptation of the Agatha Christie play. With plot twists and a surprise ending, theater owners were urged not to seat anyone during the last 10 minutes of the film. Critically lauded for her performance, Marlena proved that when it came to acting, she still gave a damn. In fact, she gave a lot of them. Damn you! Damn you! Leave her alone! Damn you! Members of the jury, are you all agreed upon your verdict? We are. Do you find the prisoner at the bar, Leonard Stephen Vole, guilty or not guilty of the murder of Emily Jane French? Guilty or not guilty? The answer to that question is the end of most mystery stories. But in witness for the prosecution, it is only the beginning of a series of climaxes that I defy you to guess. You'll talk about this picture all right, but you'll never tell the ending to your friends because you won't want to spoil their excitement and their fun. Dietrich joined an all-star cast for another courtroom drama in Stanley Kramer's acclaimed Judgment in Nuremberg. As the widow of a Nazi officer, she strives to maintain dignity and grace as her country recovers from the devastating war. For the people of the world, let it now be noted that here in our decision, this is what we stand for. Justice, truth, and the value of a single human being. Where were we? Where were we when Hitler began shrieking his hate in Reichstag? Where were we when our neighbors were being dragged out in the middle of the night to Dachau? Where were we when they cried out in the night to us? Were we deaf, dumb, blind? I'm going to go the limit. And not you, not the Pentagon, not God on his throne is going to make you do think you're talking to? Who the hell do you think you're talking to? My husband was a military man all his life. He was entitled to a soldier's death. He asked for that. That he should be permitted the dignity of a firing squad. You know what happened? It is easy to condemn the German people to speak of the basic flaw in the German character that allowed Hitler to rise to power, but at the same time, comfortably ignore the basic flaw of character that made the Russian sign pacts with him, Winston Churchill praise him, American desolates profit by him. There was nothing like your trying to make it sound. Did you sit on his lap? Stop it! Stop it! What else do you admit to, Mrs. Fowler? What else? Hello? I want that you tell me, was she feeble-minded? My mother. I feel it is my duty to point out to the tribunal that the witness is not in control of his mental processes. I know I am not. Since that day, I've been half I've ever been. Marlena made only a few more film appearances and again limited them to cameos, as in Paris when it sizzles. Her days of exploding off movie screens were over. Sensing she would be more effective as a singer, Dietrich retired from film and instead devoted herself to a series of concert appearances. As the years passed and age took its toll, Marlena became more and more reclusive. 
But when she died in Paris on May 6, 1992, she was still beloved around the world. Her shapely legs, deep voice, and glamorous good looks defined the term sex symbol. While her screen presence and obvious talent made her a respected actress. Not yet. Oh, I must. Because at this time of the night, I have no sense. No sense this time of night. He had a great career and you stopped him right in his tracks. Stop it. What are you trying to make out of him? Something like me? You fool! You don't know what you're talking about! Overflowing with charm, wit, and generosity, she remains an icon of the silver screen and one of film's greatest performers. Because of that, Hollywood will always remember Marlena Dietrich.